Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for your interest in this topic today. Um, happy Saturday. Um, as uh, Louis said, I'm Kimberly Kugler. I'm the Farm to School Coordinator at Georgia Organics. Um, and Georgia Organics is a nonprofit farmer services organization where members supported. We are based in Atlanta. We serve the whole state of Georgia. Um, and our mission is to connect organic food from Georgia farms to Georgia families. And we do that via our different programs. Um, one of them being Farm to School, which is where I come in. Um, and if you're not familiar with what Farm to School is, um, it constitutes everything depicted in this uh, infographic. But in a nutshell, it's basically just getting locally grown foods to both feed students and teach students. And you can get those locally grown foods, you know, from purchasing from a local farmer or from a local distributor who purchases from a local farmer, um, or you can grow them yourself. And um, I know everybody here today is interested in science. That's why we're gathered here. There's a lot of science that can be learned and taught through food, through growing food and through cooking food, um, as well as all of the other Georgia education standards that students have to learn. Um, math, social studies, history, even literature can be taught through food. So um, at Georgia Organics, we love food. That's what we're about. And oops, um, one of our farm to school programs that we offer is October Farm to School Month, which is a, an annual statewide campaign that we coordinate each year to get kids across Georgia planting, taking care of, harvesting, um, tasting, cooking, eating, and learning all about a fruit or vegetable. So we focus on one every year. And on the screen, you'll see past campaigns we've done. And this year is all about okra. We are living La Vida Okra in 2021, and we are thrilled to be celebrating okra. So um, you may be wondering why we chose okra, especially if you don't like okra. But um, actually, the first reason we chose okra is because people voted on okra. We actually, we have an electronic farm to school newsletter we send out every month to folks. And people, we put out a vote and had people tell us which vegetable that they wanted to celebrate for October farm to school month this year and the vast majority chose okra. So that's reason number one. But um, also there's just a lot of reasons to love okra and I've listed a few here. It's very easy to grow. It's highly adaptable, super resilient, a very productive plant. It's um, beautiful too. It has very lovely yellowish white flowers. It, it gets really tall and branches out. Um, different varieties of different colors. It's it's a gorgeous plant. Um, also, as I said, it's super productive and it's a cut and come again harvest, which means you can, you harvest it over and over and over again. It's not um, one of those crops that you only get to harvest once, like broccoli, for example, or carrots. When you go and harvest those, you don't get to harvest anymore. That's the one time you get to harvest. Um, with okra, you're harvesting daily or every other day. You just, and it keeps producing and producing and producing all the way up until the first frost, which um, depending on where you are in the state, which probably most of you may be in or around Atlanta, um, is like, you know, late October, maybe early November here. Um, so you can eat a lot of okra up until then. Um, also, the seeds are very easy to save. And um, there are tons of heirloom varieties with lots of like rich cultural histories behind those heirloom varieties. So. Lots of reasons to love okra. So now I'd love to launch a poll to see how much you all love okra. And um, you have a pretty wide range of options to choose from here. So um, if you could take this poll, I can't see the poll. So maybe Brandy or Lewis can let me know what the results are. Looks like we got a four and a five and so on that says, I love okra. Okay, great. So I don't have to convert you. Um, cool, that's good to know. Well, I love okra too, and I am really prepared to convert anybody who thinks they don't into an okra lover. Um, so as I said earlier, I'll just reiterate, 
the whole goal of Live in La Vida Okra, our October Farm to School Months campaign, is to get kids across Georgia planting okra and watching it grow and, and harvesting it and tasting it and cooking it in different ways and eating it and learning all about it. This leading up to and through the fall. So that's what this is all about. And you can participate in this too. It's free to participate. You just sign up at this link, bit.ly slash live in La Vida Okra. And um, it is free to participate. The reason why we ask you to sign up is because we have to collect some data for grant reporting purposes, but also so that we can kind of evaluate our impact across the state. We kind of, we want to see where you are in the state, how many students do you think you'll be reaching, um, and what activities you intend to do. So that's what the purpose of signing up is. And you can sign up now. The sign up is live. Um, I don't know if Lewis or Brandy, if one of you want to put that link in the chat, it might be good for people. We'll do. Cool. Thanks. All right. And when you sign up, you'll get access to all of these resources. So we have a bunch of different fact sheets, including a, a how to grow okra guidance document. We have some cool cultural highlights fact sheets and a history fact sheet. There's a ton of rich history behind okra that's very important to the South. Um, so I highly recommend checking those out. And we have Georgia standards-based lesson plans um, for early care all the way through 12th grade. Um, so all ages, and we have some fun, easy educational activities, some artsy activities. And then we have a collection of recipes this year that I'm very excited about because all of the recipes we have to offer this year were actually contributed by fellow Georgians and people who work in farm to school across the state. Um, they sent us recipes to feature in this year's campaign, and they even included some fascinating stories behind these recipes. So all of that is available to you if you sign up at that at that bit.ly link, bit.ly slash live in Levita Okra. And so um, I'm just going to go over now the very basics of planting and growing okra. Um, and then, as I said, there is a how to grow guidance document available in that online resource toolkit that I just was talking about. So you can refer back to that too if you sign up. Um, I think we may be ready for our next poll, which is have you ever grown okra? Yes, no, or maybe you don't remember. All right, so we got three no's, a yes, and a I don't remember. That would wow. be a nice variety. <laughs> Okay, cool. You said three yeses and one no? Three no's, one yes. Oh, three no's, one yes. Okay, cool. All right. Um, okay, so good news is growing okra is very easy, um, accessible to everybody. So when do you grow okra? Now is when you grow okra. Okra is very much a summertime Crop. And depending on where you are in the state, because, you know, we do have a pretty big state, um, you'll, you can start planting it usually late April. Um, if you're further south in the state, you could even, you could start planting it even sooner than that. But late spring through the summer is when you can plant okra. So right now is prime time. And where should you plant okra? Um, okra thrives in full blast sun. So wherever you decide to plant your okra should get sun all day long. Um, and you should also consider that okra can branch out pretty wide and grows pretty tall. It's a, it's a large plant. Um, so you also want to consider how much space you have and make sure you give it enough space to reach its full potential. And if you're trying to grow other things in the garden that also need sun, um, be mindful of where you plant the okra so that you're not shading out anything else that needs sun. And then on the other hand, if you want to plant something that needs more shade, through the heat of the Georgia summer, then it would be great to plant it right next to okra um, so that it gets shade maybe in the afternoon. Um, so yeah, and then another thing about where to plant okra, okra's roots, okra's tap root gets, can grow to be very long, two to four feet sometimes. So um, it's ideal to plant okra in the ground. So if you have that option, that's wonderful. 
If you have to plant it in a raised bed, that, that is fine too. It's um, as long as your raised bed is either deep or it doesn't have like any kind of landscape fabric or anything blocking the ground. So sometimes people put landscape fabric at the bottom of their raised beds to keep grass from growing up, I guess, um, or animals from getting in. But you want the okra taproot to be able to go into the ground if it needs to. Um, so it just needs depth. And if you want to plant or if you need to plant in containers, that is possible with okra. You should just select dwarf varieties of okra. So those are just varieties that don't grow as tall and big and will do better in containers. Um, some examples of dwarf varieties are Cajun Jewel is a common one that you can find. Um, there's another one called Baby Bubba. And there's there's so many varieties of okra that there's always there are lots of options for you. Um, so yes, and then one more thing about containers, I would definitely choose a container that's, let's see, I think I have a photo here. Yeah, um, a large container. So I wouldn't go, these containers I think are about 20 gallons. Well, this one might, on the right might be bigger. Uh, this one on the left I think is 20 gallons. I wouldn't plant okra in a container smaller than that. Um, somebody maybe would argue with me about that and that's fine. <laughs> but I would go definitely the bigger the container, the better off you're gonna be. Um, so let me go back to this, this screen here. So we've gone over when, where, um, now how to plant okra is very easy. Once again, okra can be direct seeded or transplanted. Um, and in case you don't know what I'm talking about, direct seeding just means placing the seed directly in the ground or garden bed where you want your plant to grow. So you plant the seed and it doesn't move. It, that's where it grows. Transplanting is when you start seed in containers or you buy seedlings from someone who has started those seeds in containers. And then you transfer those little baby plants into the ground or the garden bed. And um, the wonderful thing about okra, another wonderful thing is that you can do either one with okra. Some plants must be direct seeded. Other plants really, really should be transplanted and okra can, is fine either way. Um, there, I think it does have a slight preference for being direct seeded because its root system just like prefers to not have to move around, but um, it is fine either way. And as I said, or as I showed you these containers, um, this, in the okra in this green container right here, I transplanted and it's happy and healthy. And then the ones over here in this orange container, I direct seeded. So you can do either. Um, so when you direct seed okra, which is what I would recommend for right now, because it is, we are like in full swing summer and the soil is definitely warm enough. Um, there's not really any reason to transplant okra at this time. Um, plus okra, getting okra seeds is gonna be cheaper than buying, trying to get okra seedlings and they'll also be easier to find. So I just would recommend direct seeding at this point. Um, but anyway, you're just gonna um, seed your okra seeds half an inch to an inch deep. It doesn't have to be exact. So I usually just use uh, my first knuckle as um, to measure. And if you poke your finger into the soil until about your first knuckle, that should be about a half an inch to an inch deep, um, even if our fingers vary in size. And drop your seed in, a seed or two maybe, um, just in case one of them doesn't germinate, and then you know loosely cover it up, water it, and keep it watered until it germinates. So like water daily until your seeds germinate. And then if you're planting multiple okra seeds, um, space them about a foot to a foot and a half apart so that they're not competing with each other for, for light, for water, um, for nutrients. And then one more thing about planting okra. Okra seed has a hard outer shell, so it is notoriously slow to germinate for the most part. Um, so if you want to speed up the germination process, then you can just soak your okra seeds in water overnight and that will speed it up. Um, actually tried this um, several weeks ago just to make sure that what I was preaching was true and it did. Um, it worked. Seeds that I did not soak took several days longer to germinate than the seeds that I did soak. Um, it just gives the seeds a head start, but you don't have to soak okra seeds. So if you forget, 
No worries. It may just take a little longer to germinate. All right. So that is the when, the where, and the how of planting okra. Um, we've already done that poll. Let's see. I have actually a short and sweet little video to show y'all um, from Little Ones Learning Center. They are in Forest Park, Georgia, uh, Clayton County, south of Atlanta. They are an outstanding early learning center um, and one of our longtime partners at Georgia Organics. And they have a really great farm to early care and education program. Um, and they very kindly and generously made this video for us. Um, and one of their pre-K students actually uh, instructs us how to plant okra. So much cuter than I am. <laughs> so let me show you that. Hopefully you can still see what I want you to see. We got little ones and with me I have Georgia pre-k. Last week we planted okra in this bed and here we can see all the little seedlings coming up. So we can see all that we planted is starting to come out of ground. Nope these two see look this one and this one is starting to come up. I think because they were planted deeper see look at this one. You see the tiny little neck of the seedling right there. That's all the okra that we planted last week. Yep. Yeah. yep, that one is starting to grow. So I want Carter to tell me how we plant seeds because we went over this before. And I think he knows very well how um, we plant seeds. So like we did last week with the tomato plant and we talked about the life of a tomato plant from beginning to end, I want you to tell us the life of okra. It's the same thing. So what do we do? So, this is how you plant okra. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that then. Then mm -hmm. you put the seed in the hole. Mm -hmm. And then you have to come around. And then, and then you have to put it with water. Mm -hmm. And then you have to wait for it to grow. And you have to wait till it grows. So let's go ahead and get that started. Do exactly what you told us to do. Can we show it? You could probably even make the hole deeper if you take your finger and just stick your finger directly like that. Let's try to make the hole deeper, Carter, because I don't think that's going to work. See, it's just sitting on top. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do it in a deeper hole. Yep. Mm hmm mm hmm And then, yep, you cover it up. Okay, um, very, very clear, concise instructions from Carter. I would have him teach me how to plant something, anything. Um, so they actually reminded me of one thing I wanted to bring up, which is um, let's say you plant a couple of seeds of okra in the same spot and they both germinate, or maybe you're planting okra with kids and it doesn't, you know, nothing, <laughs> planting in a garden with kids is not like going to be perfect. Um, so maybe you have a bunch of okras sprout up in the same spot. Um, anyway, to give them the space that they need to grow, you can just like take some scissors and snip, snip out the ones that, um, to, to get rid of, to thin out the okra plants. Um, so, you know, use your best judgment and leave the plant that looks the healthiest and you can snip the other ones out with scissors um, so that you don't disturb the root system of the one that you want to grow. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, so caring for your okra after you plant. Um, after you put, plant the seeds, it's important to keep the soil well watered until they germinate. Um, and then after they germinate, they are so low maintenance, um, really, really easy. They obviously need to be watered like any other plant, maybe about an inch of water a week. Um, if we're getting weekly rain, that's probably plenty. Um, but yeah, while they're little babies, just keep them watered and then try to keep the area right around them free of weeds so they're not competing with any other plants. Um, and yeah, you'll have nice big healthy okra plants. Um, 
And then uh, once they start flowering, um, they'll put on these beautiful yellowish white flowers. And once they start doing that, you'll, you'll need to start harvesting soon. So when you see the flowers, they're about to make pods. Um, and once they start making pods, you're gonna need to check on them daily or every other day for harvesting because they grow fast. So like an okra pod that maybe is too small to harvest one day, by the end of the next day could be too big. Um, so you just have to keep, you know, make, like make it part of your routine to go out and harvest. Um, and the best time or the best length to harvest okra pods really depends on the variety, but as a general rule of thumb, two to four inches is a good length for an okra pod. So um, at that length, they're still really nice and tender. Um, if, if they're left on the plant too long, they get woody. And you can tell the difference between a tender okra pod and a woody okra pod, you know, just by holding one in your hand. Um, but they'll be nice and tender and delicious if you if you're harvesting regularly. And as I said, different okra varieties produce different pod lengths. So some will be longer than that, and some might be shorter. Um, but you'll kind of get a get an eye for it as you go. And the reason it's important to harvest regularly also is that if you leave okra pods on the plant. Um, too long and they become woody, they also won't keep producing. So if you leave the pods on and they never come off, then the okra plant kind of thinks that it's done its job and it's going to spread its seed and then it doesn't need to keep making it. So harvesting regularly will also make it so that your plant keeps producing okra for you. Um, and then one more thing about harvesting, okra has tiny little spines in its leaves that cause um, some people's skin to itch. For some reason, it doesn't affect everybody. Um, it most definitely does affect me. So um, I have to be careful of the okra itch as it's called. And to avoid it, when you harvest, you can just put like a long sleeve cotton shirt on over the whatever you're wearing or and some gloves and um, then you should be safe. But yeah, if you're harvesting, especially like lots of plants, one after the other, uh, it's important to make sure you protect your skin. Um, and I didn't mention, but you can harvest okra with scissors or clippers, or you can even just snap them off the plant with your hands um, carefully so that you don't like break the stem of the plant. All right, how are we doing? I can't see anybody, so I just wanna make sure that we're we're all good. We're good. We've got a bunch of questions for the Q&A section queued up. Great. Wonderful. Um, okay. So I'm going to move on to another fun part of this presentation, um, a former demo. But first, I wanted to just make an acknowledgement. Um, so today, we are at Cosmos Farm out in Carrollton, Georgia, uh, which is about an hour west of Atlanta, and um, we are on Muscogee Creek land, as are probably many of you watching, if not all of you. Um, Cosmos is on Muscogee Creek land, so um, the Muscogee Creek indigenous people occupied this land before they were forced off by the U.S. government in the early 1800s. Um, and on this land today, we're going to be planting okra seeds and okra is indigenous to Africa. It is uh, very much a part of African foodways and has been for a long time and was so long before it was ever a part of um, southern foodways. Um, we, or okra came here via the transatlantic slave trade and descendants of kidnapped Africans who were forced into slavery have told us that their ancestors actually braided okra seeds into their hair, uh, along with rice and millet seeds to bring with them. So those um, enslaved Africans began cultivating okra here in the South and cooking it. And that is how it became part of Southern foodways and culture that we are so familiar with. And we would be remiss if we did not make those acknowledgements um, and acknowledge that historical context that has brought us to 
what we're doing today and where we are. So thank you for taking a moment to acknowledge that with me. Okay. All right. And now this is Farmer John at Cosmos Farm in Carrollton, Georgia, showing us how he plants okra. John, um, this is Farmer John Davis, who, who is the farmer and owner of Cosmos Farm. And he's going to show us today how we plant okra here at Cosmos. But first, I have a few questions for you, John. Um, how much do you love okra? <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of one to five, one being hard pass, no thank you, and five being you would propose marriage to it. <laughs> I'm an absolute five on okra. I love okra. John is ready to spend the rest of his life with okra, as am I. Um, great. Why do you like okra so much? Uh, there's just so much you can do with it. You can eat it raw, pickle it, saute it. Um, it's just, I like the texture of it. It's crunchy. Mm -hmm. it adds good texture to, to something you're cooking. I love everything about it. I agree with all of that. Um, and do your kids like okra? They do. They like it raw, actually. They like to come out, pick their own okra, and snack on it raw. Wow. Did y'all hear that? There is hope. <laughs> um, okay. And what is your favorite way to eat okra? Um, probably pickled. I like it pickled. Mm, good choice. Do you make your okra pickles? Or where do you get your okra pickles? <laughs> I do not make my own pickles. I have uh some customers and friends from some of the farmers markets we do uh i'll give them a couple of bushels of the okra every year and they'll return about 50 or 75 jars of pickled okra so, so pickled okra all year long all year wow that's the way to do it um okay so at this point um we'll we'll see his demo in a second but i wanted to launch a third poll um the poll about your favorite way to eat okra. So what is y'all's favorite way to eat okra? All right, we got all sorts of answers here. Pickled, fried, sauteed, air fried. But frankly, I can't choose. You can't choose? I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> um, pickled is maybe my favorite way. Grilled is also excellent. So is curried. Mm, it is hard to choose, depends on the day. But um, what I will tell you is if, I can't remember if there's anyone out there who doesn't like okra in the audience, but if you don't like it, if you think you don't like it, you maybe just haven't tried it the way that you like it yet. And there are many, many ways to eat it. So thanks for humoring me. Back to the video, if I can get the controls out of my way. Uh, Yes. I need you to hook me up with some okra pickles. No problem. Okay. Uh, so how long have you been growing okra? Uh, about 12 years. Wow. So you really do love it. <laughs> okay. So what, what do you like about growing okra? Uh, I like that it's pretty easy. You can just water it and it'll do its own thing as long as it gets enough water uh, and sun and space just keep coming and keeps producing okra pods that you just keep cutting over and over again. So it's a pretty easy thing to grow. It's a very generous plant. It gives a lot. Um, all right. Do you have any interesting okra stories you could share with us <laughs> about your experience growing okra? Uh, sure. I have a couple. There's a time I was apprenticing and picking okra and I forgot to put on long sleeves. And I got what we call the okra itch, which is a terrible itch on your arms <laughs> when the okra spines get into your skin. So I had to run out of the field and uh, dunk my upper body into some water. Uh, so that was an interesting experience. And another time out here, we were picking okra and we had a rat snake about head high uh, in one of our rows that was just hanging out. That was really interesting. How, how was it head high? Was it floating? <laughs> No, uh, okra plants are very tall uh, mm. and they have strong stems and snakes can get up there and like to hang out up there. It's kind of like a jungle atmosphere when you're picking up. It just wanted to say hi to you because you're so handsome. That's right. 
guess so. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those stories with us. Um, we'd love now to see what you're going to do with this tool. Sure. Um, what is this? What is this tool? Uh, this is an earthway cedar. Uh, pretty important for any small farm to have. You need to seed direct seed rows of crops and directly into the ground. This is an excellent tool. How long have you had it? Uh, I've had this for about 12 years. They last a long time. Wow. That's a great tool. Cool. All right. So, yeah, he's going to show us now how he plants okra seed with this earthway cedar. Sure. We get This is Clemson Spineless uh, Organic Okra Seed. You get from High Mowing Organic Seed Company. It's a great seed company we use a lot. And I'm just going to fill up my cedar about halfway so it's not over full and then get the tool ready so i want to make sure the seed's going to come out by spinning this wheel which you can see back here has a belt that turns the disc that picks up the seed and then drops it all the way down and it's going to go into the soil so pretty simple tool very effective and efficient I can also set how deep I want the seed to go by adjusting this. For okra, I usually do about half inch, but it can be deeper than that. Half inch to an inch. Yeah, it can be about half inch to an inch. I tighten this and I'm ready to go. What does this chain do? This just drags the soil in after the seed drops in. This covers it with soil. Perfect. Yeah. What a nifty tool. It is. All right. So... John is going to demo how that works now for us. All right. I see one bed of okra. He's pretty good at making straight lines. Now he's going to make a second row coming down the other side of the bed. Magical. That's so cool. So that's a very quick and efficient way to plant a lot of okra. It is. It's 200 feet of okra. Wow. So I was just, we just planted two okra seeds <laughs> in a container over there and watered them. How, how are you going to water this seed? Uh, we use drip irrigation, so small lines of plastic that drip water right at the base of the plant very efficient way to water. That's what drip irrigation looks like. And so you, later y'all will lay down some drip tape. Some drip on the seed beds and add it to the main line and water maybe once a week or every two weeks, depending on how much rain we get. Cool. And then when do you think it'll be ready to harvest? When will we be eating this okra? This okra will probably be about 60, 60 to 90 days somewhere in that range, depending on how much water we get. Cool. Well, thank you so very much for showing us how you plant okra at Cosmos Farm. We really appreciate your time teaching us about the earthly cedar. Um, okay, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment and um, open it up for questions. All right, thanks. So I've allowed everybody to unmute yourselves if you'd like any uh, like to ask any questions. But I'm going to start off uh, going through some of the questions that were asked uh, in the chat. So the first one I saw was, will the taproot wrap around? Oh, wow. That's a, a very interesting question I've never gotten before. Will it wrap around? Um, so maybe whoever asked that can unmute themselves and, and explain that a little further for me. If you were to use it in a pot, a large pot, that's mm -hmm. obviously not four feet, or if there was the fabric on the bottom of a planter. Right. Wow, that's a that's a really good question. And I don't honestly know the answer. I don't know if it will wrap around. I do know that it's not recommended to have like fabric at the bottom of a planter that doesn't allow it to penetrate into the ground. So that leads me to think that maybe it does not wrap around. Um, but so okra, it has its one big deep taproot, but it also has a bunch of lateral roots that spread out really wide. Um, 
So I don't know. I, I guess I would say like if, if it's between planting it in that container um, or not planting it at all, I would just plant it in the container and experiment um, because that's the thing about growing anything and growing food is um, that you just, there's always something new to learn. I, you just learn something new every time you do it, even if you think you know a lot about it. Um, so I would give it a shot and then maybe you would be the one who could answer that question. Um, but another thing about its root system is, so okra is actually known as a scavenger crop because of its deep taproot and its really wide lateral root system. It just is really good at finding what it needs. Um, so, so sometimes it's, it's a, referred to as a scavenger crop for that reason. But yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know if, it, if it'll like wrap around the container. Um, that's a good question. So yeah, related to, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Planter. <laughs> now I'm worried it'll tear up my planter. <laughs> it would oh. break. Hmm. Well, the lateral roots aren't like as thick as the tap root. So I don't think it, I don't think you need to worry about that. So related to that, we got another question from Catherine about how close can an eggplant be planted uh, next to an okra plant? How close should an eggplant be? Is that what you said? That's right. Um, okay, that's that's an interesting question too. So I'm glad you asked actually because um, eggplants are are known to be good companion plants to okra. So I'm glad you're thinking about planting okra and eggplant together. Plus they just go so well together in food. Um, so I would plant the eggplant at least a um, couple feet away from the okra. So okra, as I said earlier, it needs about a foot and a half of space all the way around. Um, but then I would plant the eggplant even a little further than that, just so that to make sure that you're not shading the eggplant with the okra. So you don't want your okra plant to um, block the eggplant from getting enough sun. Um, and so there's different ways you, you can make sure that you uh, situate them so that the eggplant is on the southern side of your okra plant um, so that you can make sure it gets as much sun as, as possible throughout the day, or you can make sure it's far enough away. So I would say at least um, a couple feet or so away. Great. And Catherine had a second part to that question. Is it the same for peppers? Yes. All right, thanks. I think peppers can actually, um, they'll do okay in partial shade, but um, I would do the same thing with peppers. So Lorraine asked, uh, will these need to be staked? No, okra does not need to be staked. It's a very, it's a very strong plant. It, help, it, it is very good at holding itself up. Great. And Lorraine also wanted to know how many plants would one need to cook as a dinner vegetable for two to three persons? How many plants? Oh, well, that's an interesting question too, because you could, um, let's say you wanted to do dinner for two or three people on Saturday. You could start harvesting for that dinner through the, through the week. So you could start at the beginning of the week and be harvesting through the week and collecting more okra. But I guess I would say, um, Maybe, maybe like four plants, four or five plants would give you plenty. All right, thanks. That may be, you maybe could even get away with fewer than that. I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want you to get, be disappointed. It depends on how much you love okra. <laughs> True. So I had a question and is it, have you, or do you know anybody that has ever tried okra coffee? Oh, I love this question too. I don't know anybody who has tried it and I have not tried it yet. Um, but yeah, you can't, apparently the seeds um, have been used to make coffee. Um, uh, but no, I don't know anybody and I am anxious to try it I, myself. I have not yet. They have no caffeine in case anybody wanted to, uh, was interested in trying this. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so there's an organic gardening question from Robert. Are clay bricks acceptable for a planter? Clay bricks. Or is it better to use those galvanized steel planters? Uh, I think either one is fine as long as um, whatever you're planting in has a way to drain out excess water. So it needs drainage holes. Um, and then for okra, um, it needs to be fairly deep, a deep container. 
Okay. And from Catherine, we have, how do you save the seeds? Good question. So um, one way to save the seeds, or maybe this is the only way to save the seeds, is to, when you're ready to do that, leave uh, an okra pod or a couple okra pods. There's a lot of seeds in every okra pod, so you actually don't really need more than one or two okra pods. But leave one or two okra pods on a plant or a couple plants and, um, you know, like leave it on way past the time that you would harvest it to eat it. And it'll just keep growing and it'll get really big. And then you'll feel that it'll like be really woody. Like, um, like if you try to squeeze it, it doesn't really give. It's just really hard. Um, and at that point, I mean, you can just leave it there um, and let it kind of dry out. But at some point it'll, it'll start to dry out and then you'll see the top that it'll start, the top will start to begin to split open. And eventually if it's left like that, it'll split open and the seeds kind of spray out onto the ground. So you wanna get it before that happens. Um, so you could wait and just keep watching it or at, at some point when it's like really woody and, and way past harvest time, you could just cut it off the plant and then um, dry it out somewhere, somewhere, someplace um, like, like a dark dry place. You can just let the pods dry out um, and then break them open and they're your seeds. It's like, it's a super easy plant to save seeds from. Great. And you said okra doesn't need to be replanted every year. Is that right? Uh, okra is an annual, so it does need to be replanted. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't tolerate, um, freezing temperatures. So once we get our first frost, well, once we get our first freeze, um, that kills off the plant. Got it. It, like, it won't come back the next year. So you do have to plant it every year. Oh, here's, here's another one. Uh, Robert says, I read you need to harvest the pods to cause new growth. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, you need to harvest your okra at least every other day. That's what I would recommend. So if you harvest it on Monday, you can maybe don't have to worry about it Tuesday or you could harvest Tuesday, but definitely go back Wednesday. So you do need to harvest regularly to, to encourage the plant to keep producing because as I was kind of explaining about saving the okra seed, if you leave the pods on the okra plant, then it, it, that those really mature pods have seeds that can be replanted and if it's if they stay there, eventually that pod will kind of break open and the seeds will spread. And then that plant's job of reproducing itself is done. So it doesn't need to keep putting pods out. So if you keep harvesting it, it will con continue to flower and produce pods all the way up until the first frost. And yes, the larger, harder ones are not as desirable because they're really fibrous and woody. Um, so like more difficult to chew. So you definitely want to harvest them while they're still tender, like two to two to four inches long, depending on the variety. And then I don't know if I said this earlier, but if it's particularly rainy, um, let's say during your okra harvesting time, the pods will go grow faster. So they can grow longer than that and still be tender um, if it's been really rainy. If it's been really dry, then they won't grow as long. Um, so they'll be shorter. Uh, and more tender. Yeah, that's it. So Kimberly, do you have any last words for uh, for anybody that joined? Um, I just saw a question that says this oh, still yeah. needs to be amended. And um, I don't know if I said this earlier. So thanks for asking that, Lisa, if you're still there. Um, soil, or sorry, okra is super adaptable. And like I said, a scavenger crop. So it, it finds what it needs. So it doesn't need um, super rich, amazing soil. Although, you know, if it has it, then it'll be even healthier. I would just um, suggest adding compost to your soil. That's plenty. You don't really need to fertilize it much. Just add some good compost to it and you're, you're all set. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.